The vampires captured imaginations and inspired nightmares in communities around the world for centuries. And while the Transylvania region of Romania has long dominated the vampire-related conversation, for a few decades in the early 20th century, the most feared blood drainer in the world was not Dracula, but a person from Romania's neighbour to the west, Hungary. Bela Kish seemingly had it all. By 1914, the handsome 37-year-old tinsmith was running a successful business. He was well liked by his neighbours in the town of Sincota outside Budapest and never seemed to be without a girl on his arm. True, it was always a different girl and none of them were local and no one, not even his elderly housekeeper, Mrs. Jakubets, knew their names. But he'd earned the loyalty of Mrs. Jakubets nonetheless and she kept faithful watch over his home on Kossuth Street for two years after he was conscripted into the Austro-Hungarian military to fight in World War I. Still, handsome or not, well liked or otherwise, when there's a war on, no one can wait long to make a book. In July 1916, after rumours began circulating that Kish had been captured and possibly killed in Serbia, his landlord began preparing to lease the house on Kossuth Street again. Upon arriving at the property, he noticed several large metal drums that had been left outside the house. It was widely assumed that these were storing oil or gas in the face of hostilities though some neighbours thought it was more likely he was storing liquor. The landlord decided to open one of the drums which had been soldered shut. As soon as he punctured the lid, the landlord was hit with the putrid odour of death. A neighbour who happened to be a chemist confirmed that it was the scent of rotting flesh. Kish's landlord quickly informed the police in Budapest who sent Dr Charles Nagy, detective chief of the Budapest police, out to investigate. When Nagy and two of his men arrived on the property, they immediately opened the first drum. Submerged in a brine of methanol was the relatively well-preserved body of a young woman with long brown hair, along with the rope that had strangled her. The six other drums bore the same grisly contents, naked or partially clothed corpses of young women and the same murder weapon, a length of rope. The methanol, also known as wood alcohol, acted as a preservative, keeping decomposition to a minimum. The seven drums were only the beginning. Nagy and his men continued to search the property at Kossuth Street and soon discovered an entire cache of drums buried around the property. Each opened lid revealed another young corpse until somewhere between 24 and 30 were logged into the police file. All of the victims had been strangled. Some reportedly had dual puncture marks on their neck as though Kish had drained them of their blood. It's not clear whether he did so but theorising around the wounds has led some to dub Bela Kish the Vampire of Sincota. If the sight of two dozen pickled bodies was horrifying, what Nagy found inside Kish's home was downright bizarre. Most rooms yielded no clues that linked the former occupant to the brutal murder and meticulous preservation of so many young people. A distraught Mrs. Jakubets denied any knowledge of the bodies or their identities and was adamant in her defence of Kish going so far as to describe a time when he tended to the injuries of one of the neighbourhood dogs. Then Nagy arrived at a locked door. Mrs. Jakubets explained that though she was in possession of the key, Kish had instructed her never to enter, or let anyone else enter the room. There was good reason for that. When Nagy went inside, he found a room stuffed with evidence of Kish's misdeeds. Bookshelves filled with volumes on poisoning and strangulation lined the little office. A desk and chair stood in the centre. It was inside that desk that Nagy hit the evidentiary jackpot. Documents within the desk revealed that Kish had spent more than a decade corresponding with dozens of women. He advertised in Budapest newspapers under the name Hoffman, claiming to be a lonely man in search of a wife, preferably one of no small fortune. When such a woman responded, as many did, he'd apparently visit her in the city, give her gifts and generally romance her, all the while probing for information on whether or not she had close relatives nearby. Those who were more or less alone, he continued to woo in letters, convincing them to send him large sums of money, or in some cases, their entire savings, in order to start a life together. One woman, Catherine Varga, sold her profitable dressmaking business, and was last seen leaving her house in Budapest to join Kish and Sincota. 
Kish reportedly received a whopping 174 proposals of marriage through his advertising and accepted marriage from no less than 74 women. At least 20 who came to Sincota met their end, perhaps because they realised their error and threatened to reveal Kish for what he was, or perhaps because he simply enjoyed gross acts of violence. Each of the 74 had their own packet of correspondence in Kish's desk, and Nagy reached out to local police to trace the women. Several of the bodies were identified, though it's unclear just how many Nagy was able to put a name to. One woman, whose name was found stitched into clothing in Kish's house, was later identified as Yuliana Pashak. Her name appeared in court records in Budapest. She had sued Kish for defrauding her of money on the promise of marriage. Her case was thrown out when she failed to show up to the hearing. Upon discovering the first seven bodies, Nagy had notified the Hungarian army to arrest Bela Kish if he was still alive, and had frozen any postal or telegraphic correspondence that might be headed Kish's way. But in the summer of 1916, the Hungarian army was in the middle of a war, and to compound the difficulty, the names Bela and Kish were very common among Hungarians. Still, when word came in October that a man named Bela Kish was hospitalised in Serbia, Nagy took off right away. While military authorities at the hospital believed they had the right man, Nagy would never find out for certain. Kish or not, whoever the slippery soldier was, he found a way to escape before Nagy could arrive, throwing off hospital staff by placing a dead man in his bed. The hospital encounter would be the closest anyone would come to catching Hungary's Lonely Heart Slayer, although over the decades several people would claim to spot him, especially as news of his crime spread throughout the world. One witness was said to have seen him in Budapest in 1919. Another claimed Kish was with the French Foreign Legion as quote Hoffman in 1920. Others put him in Romania and Turkey. Every time a sighting was investigated, the mysterious target would vanish. In 1932, a New York City detective with a famous memory for faces was sure he spotted Kish exiting a subway station in Times Square but lost him in the crowd. The last reported investigation into a sighting was in 1936 when rumours circulated that Kish was working as a janitor at a New York City apartment building. When police stopped by to check it out however, they'd found he'd disappeared. We may never know how or when Kish met his end or whether he limited his killing to the Bryant bodies found at his home. What is for certain is that this prolific murderer cast a long dark shadow across the early 20th century in the West and somehow, whether through cunning, luck or accident, evaded the justice he deserved.